Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Nick or VMX, and you are listening to Potato Cast. And I know it's been. Uh, oh, my volume's all low. Let me uh, jack that up there. Okay. Whoa, Bloom. All right. I know it's been a few weeks. Um, I'm trying to do these more often. It's not always possible, but um, yeah, the last one. I, I also don't want to just do Potato Cast when I don't have anything to talk about because i feel like when i do it and i'm just rambling or talking about whatever that it's nothing good um the last one was titled how monetization killed youtube which is a, a topic that had actually been on my mind for quite a long time and i really wanted to talk about that and uh get my thoughts on it out there and i do still feel that i rambled and didn't quite get my point across the way that i wanted to but i think i uh i think it was about 85 percent successful in getting my point across um sorry i'm just dealing with something at the same time here sorry all right, so let me get to your questions and comments uh, about that. Uh, the anime fan says, hashtag potato. Yes, autocorrect sometimes is screwing with what I'm typing. Sorry. I can go for days for how YouTube has changed from for the creator to be... Oh, from being for the creator, I think is what he means, to becoming a shit show. Um, I'm going to stop and say I don't think it's a shit show. I think the problems with YouTube start with YouTube itself. Um, it may not be for the creator anymore, but there is no reason that creative people can't do YouTube. It just never should have been considered to be a job. And that was a huge part of my point last week. I don't think it ever should have been a job. I think once you turn it into a job, that's when you kill it. So, you know, YouTube created the monetization feature, but it's the people who decided that they were going to do it full time that made it a job. And then... When their videos aren't getting enough views or whatever, they decide to uh, say, well, um, YouTube killed my channel. But the fact is, is that you can continue to do the videos that you want to do and you love to do. Just don't expect to make any money off of it. And that's the difference between what it is now and what it, what it, is, what it was uh, se seven, eight years ago. Nobody was expecting to make money off of it. And even when the partnership program started, no one is expecting to make real money off of it, and definitely no one was expecting to make a living off of it. It wasn't YouTube itself that uh, cannibalized itself. It was, the, it was the people on YouTube who decided that they were going to make it their careers, which is a ridiculous concept. Let me read the rest of your comment here. Um, animation has almost died thanks to YouTube. That's not true. Uh, which is sad because I love animation. All I'm going to say, in my opinion, it's all the old media fault because they see stuff like YouTube killing views, so some of them make fake shit to make YouTube look like they support evil shit. And What the hell are you talking about? All right, I can't even read that. I'm, I'm sorry, man. I, I see where you're going with this with the rest of your, your, uh, your comment, and, you know, I've read some crazy shit on my channel, but that's a little too crazy for me, so I'm going to move on here. Alex Shannon says... Eh, FF10 is one of those games that doesn't sit as well with me as its reputation implies I should. Between the weirdly subpar graphics for the time, the strange voice acting, the meandering from place to place, the puzzles, and the fucking Blitzball, which wasn't as fun as I was expecting it to be, I kind of don't like it. Final Fantasy 8 and 9 were way more advanced than 10 graphically. Okay, that's blatantly not true. And I felt like the three PSX games played a lot better in terms of speed. That's certainly not true, especially in regards to 8. 8 was a piece of crap. I mean, you can say that ten's not to your taste and you didn't care for it, but to say that 8 and 9 had better graphics is just very strange. Um, Berserker0001 says, hashtag potato, yep. Seems like I picked the wrong time to try and get into it. Granted, I just want to do it, I think he's talking about YouTube, to give me something to do besides du dusting the same monsters, bandits, and raiders in any games I have. Or maybe not. I actually don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm sorry. It's been a couple of weeks. Alex Shannon again said, did you look into taking the Universal Yums guys to court over lost earnings? Um, I would not have a case there, because here's the thing. Um, what they were supposed to do is they would send me the boxes, and then I would do the video, and then anybody who clicked through 
in you know the link that was in the description and and bought anything there i would get a piece of that so probably nobody did that you know and and to be honest i didn't really expect anybody to and that that's perfectly fine i didn't start doing those you know that i didn't take that brand deal because i thought i was going to make money off of it I, I i told you guys last week about how i feel about making money off of youtube and how i feel about the whole concept of doing things specifically to make money off of YouTube. I didn't make do that brand deal to, to try to make money. The fact that I didn't make any money off of it is fine. Um, I have no way of knowing how many people clicked it or how many people bought anything. Probably nobody. Um, but the fact is that I did that video because I thought it would be fun. I thought it would be a great way to involve my sister in the channel and, and just do a really cool video. Um, they said that they would, it would be like two boxes, you know, and then after that they would evaluate whether they would continue to send more. For whatever reason, they only sent one box, and then they said they were not going to send any more, and I was just like, oh well, whatever. So, l lost earnings. I, I mean, I I couldn't imagine what amount of money that I would be owed, if anything. I really don't care. Another comment from Alex Shan, and I feel you there. I'm not making content I don't enjoy making. I gave up on reviewing Senran Kagura 2 Deep Crimson because I just didn't care for the game. That's an odd thing to say, but I'll get back to that. Same went for my Let's Play with the Princess Heart. Why would you give up on... Alright, I really gotta find where my phone is. Because, uh, you heard that vibration? It's like... I never heard that before. It's like it's resting on something weird. weird. Oh, it's over here. It's right here. Alright, I'm sorry about that. So anyway, um... Uh... I don't know why you would give up reviewing a game because you didn't enjoy it. Reviewing means giving your opinion of it. You know, yeah, you have to play it and whatnot, but, I mean, then just give it a bad review. You, you can just say that it sucks. I don't understand why you would not review a game because you didn't like it. That's the point of the review, to say you didn't like it. Heisensoul says, hashtag potato, when I think back to about seven or eight years ago when I found your channel. Wow, has it been that long? Why do I feel like I've only seen your comments recently? Maybe you had a different username. I think I was looking for videos about video game Urban Legends. Yeah, a lot of people found me that way. And I found your Urban Legends of video game series, and from there I looked at the other content on your channel I loved and came back. I also used to really like your daily request videos, but I felt the quality dipped on those videos because it didn't seem like you were into them anymore by the time you stopped doing them. I'm going to stop right there and reply to what you said. You are so right, and I'm so glad that you, that you said that, that you had the balls to come out and say that the request videos were getting stale and that and that you felt that I wasn't into them because you are absolutely right and so many people have asked me why I stopped doing those random request videos because they got a lot of views I was getting subscribers all the time I was making more money but the fact is it was stale I was getting bored with it and when I got bored with it I didn't care as much about it and I was making it you know, for the fans, just that was the only reason I was doing it. But after a while, it got so stale that I thought this is going to get to the point where I'm not going to want to do it. It's going to feel like a job, even though I'm barely making money. I was making more then. But, you know, I never wanted it to be I have to do this to continue getting a YouTube check. I stopped because I needed to stop. And I know a lot of people did not appreciate that. A lot of people did not want me to stop doing that. But you are absolutely right. Towards the end, the quality of them was spotty at best. There were a few gems near the end. I think the Weapon Lord video, Weapon Lord for Super NES, was like my last really good request video. But overall, ever since switching to Let's Plays, I'm not playing anything I don't want to play. I'm not playing anything that I think is not going to make a good video. And I'll be honest with you, there have been a few Let's Plays that I've star started and stopped and completely deleted and never uploaded simply because I didn't, you know, one of them was uh, uh, Luffy of the Legend Returns on Game Boy Color, okay? And that's a good game. It's a game that I enjoy playing, but I realized about a third of the way through the game that as much as I enjoy the video, uh, the videos, now, as much as I enjoy the game, it is boring as shit to watch. 
you know, and it, and it was it was so dull, and I realized that it, it was just nobody is going to want to see this, even though there was a few good jokes in there. Nobody's going to want to see this, and it was hard to be entertaining while playing such a grindy game with these dungeons that are all, you know, procedurally generated and everything. So, um, yeah. Hold on one second, guys. got to pause for something. Okay, so... Sorry about that. I did have to pause for a second. Let me continue. I, I'm really so glad that you said that, that the videos weren't that good towards the end because they, they, they weren't. That's why I stopped doing them. And I'm so glad you said that because so many people said, I wish you did that. There were people that unsubscribed. There were people that stopped watching. They didn't give Let's Plays a chance because they don't want to watch Let's Plays, which is fine. I, I, I think that, you know, honestly, they're a lot better. I mean, because it's like the same type of humor just, you know, over a longer period of time. But, um, yeah, no, I wasn't into it. You're absolutely right. Let me read what the rest of your comment. Now, I used to be a huge fan of Doug Walker, but I feel like the quality in his videos aren't even close to what they used to be. And I don't think I've watching one of his videos in about two or three years now. On a sad, on a sad note, I think he means sad, but I actually did meet Doug Walker in April of 2015 at the Midwest Media Expo in Detroit, and several channel awesome people I interacted with. He was by far my least favorite, simply because he was the least personable. He wasn't mean or anything, just not personable. And on top of that, when I finally met him and got a chance to speak with him, I felt like I really had nothing to say to him. Necro, have you ever met anyone famous who you were excited about meeting, and it was kind of a letdown when you finally met them? Uh, no. And I'm going to reply to the rest of what you said, but let me finish what you uh, wrote here. Thanks for making great content, and I hope the asshole pieces of shit extorting Hitomi's brother end up in prison for what they are doing. And that's an excellent segue, because I have a rather large update to give about that whole situation. But I want to finish the comments before I talk about the Hitomi stuff, Hitomi and her brother. Um, Doug Walker, I was never a fan of his content, simply... And, and this may seem weird. I just I just find him annoying. I'm sure he's a great guy and everything, and I, I understand why people like his content it's just it's not for me because i just personally find his his voice and his mannerisms and the way he speaks to be you know irritating um i've never met anybody that was famous that i felt was like you know like a dick or, or just disappointing in any way but i i think that you know you know you said that uh let's see you said he was the he he, he wasn't mean but he was just not personable some people just aren't and that's fine. It's it's a little bit unfair to expect him to be personable be, just because he's a, a, a YouTube personality because he's not interacting directly with the fans on YouTube. And that's a kind of thing that takes practice. You know, if you're going to be famous, being personable with fans is something that's not easy. Or even if you naturally do take to I mean, he could have been like really tired or whatever. Um but I, like I said, I don't really watch the guy's content because I just, I don't, the character that he plays, I find to be annoying. So there you go. Um, Armageddon Time says, hashtag potato, this has been one of the most insightful, meaningful, and heartfelt videos I've seen from you. It spoke the truth about YouTube, heart about Hitomi and her brother, and meaning, and, and meaning from your opinions overall. I have no questions. I'm just glad to call you my friend. Uh, yeah, and, and like I said, I'm going to be getting back to Hitomi and her brother after I get done with the comments, because that is the main thing about this uh, this episode. I really do have to give an update on that and talk quite thoroughly on everything that's happened. Ross Edwards says, I remember it being said one time on MTV2 way back in the day that once something good is discovered by corporate America, it is taken and dissolved until it is dead. It seems to be something which happens to any entity seeking to make money, even if it is just to survive. If it is good and popular, it is milk dry, beyond dry even. And how ironic that the medium that you heard that through was MTV2, okay? A channel created to play music videos because the original MTV just wasn't playing them anymore. And now, from what I understand, even MTV2 does not play videos. And um, to quote Jack Black's character in The School of Rock, um, you know, the man ruled rock and roll with something called MTV. And MTV did exactly what you said to to music. So it's kind of ironic that they would be, you know, that they would have that much of a lack of self-awareness. That they would admit that that's a truth 
that something good is discovered by corporate America, or, or really just, not, it doesn't have to be corporate and it doesn't have to be America. It just has to be the populace in general. It's taken and dissolved until it's dead. And they did that to music, and they did that to rock and roll culture. So it's kind of funny that they would say that. Nensen DeBoss says, hashtag potato cast. Hey, NecroVMX. I totally agree with your points about YouTube and the ad apocalypse. It's actually ad apocalypse, but all right. The algorithm isn't fair to the little guys, even if people, including myself, are in it just for the fun and not money. Well, here's the thing about that, and this is why it was always destined to fail. I know there's more of your uh, comment, but I want to reply to what you said about the algorithms not being fair. They're not designed to be fair. They were never supposed to be fair. And for YouTube to be to make money themselves, it's not supposed to be fair because um, the algorithms to make videos get more views by promoting them more, give you know putting them more on the front page and putting them more in recommended, um, they work to get more advertising dollars to get more views on you know on videos that have the ads on them. If they put videos through this promotional machine that are not going to make them money because the advertiser is going to pull out or because the ads on the video don't work with the content that's being shown. For example, you know, I run a gaming channel and I've seen my own ads, you know, when I look at YouTube, sometimes I'm watching my own videos for any number of reasons, uh, through a mobile app and there's, there's no blocking ads on that. And I see them. And when I see video game related stuff and when I see movie related stuff like movie trailers and stuff that makes perfect sense you know when i see like an ad for like geico that doesn't make sense to me you know but uh you know so there's a lot of reasons why they're pushing certain videos or certain types of videos because those are the ones that are making youtube money okay they have to do that to make a profit the fact that the partners are kind of so lopsided where there's like the upper crust and then everything else is sewage that's a byproduct of that and that's why it was always destined to be that way and it was always destined to fail it was never going to be fair so you know there's that too are you planning on buying snes mini classic uh no but I'm going to finish what you said here. I'm surprised Nintendo had the balls to release Star Fox 2 after 21 years. Even if there isn't a two-player battle mode, it's still a great game. I don't know if it's a great game. I, it seems like an okay game to me. I can kind of... I Honestly, after seeing it being played and everything, I can kind of understand why it was canceled. But uh, especially since, from what I understand, the version of it on the, uh, the, Super, the Super NES uh, Mini Classic doesn't run at full speed because it's not taking full advantage of that FX2 chip. So, Glad to hear Hitomi isn't homeless, and I hope her brother's situation with those evil witches is resolved for the sake of sanity. It is so not resolved, and I'm going to go into that in depth, so uh, stick stick with me on this. MMZen says, LOL, the alt-right twits are crying and whining about the Nazi killing in the new Wolfenstein. <laughs> for a group of people that complains about SJWs all day long, they sure do seem to need safe spaces yeah no they're a little triggered um they're not actually complaining about the nazi killing which is hilarious because as we know the wolfenstein series has been around since the 80s and it's it's been about killing nazis since the very beginning or at least in the first two games it's mostly about sneaking by nazis and trying not to get killed by nazis uh it was the third game that made it primarily about killing nazis um but yeah i i think what they're they're they they're feeling targeted right now and rightfully so because they are being targeted because they should be targeted um because they're you know uh bethesda is using these these slogans like make make america nazi free again you know and they're like hey that's like make america great again that's what god emperor trump said and you know hashtag top keck and you know all this bullshit and they're, they're like they're saying that they want us out you know like yeah we do fuck you you know, I'm, I'm glad that they're making such a fury over it because it really makes them look fucking stupid as hell. Dragonheart64 says, hashtag potato. Hey there, Necro. I've been looking forward to this video, and damn, was it good and very interesting. I've wanted to start making videos myself for a while, and I've been thinking about what I'm going to do for the last two to three years. I remember back when people on YouTube would just upload videos because it was a fun thing to do 
and just to entertain people. But when the whole YouTube partnership program came along, now people think, oh, I can do this for a living and live healthy this way. I really don't see the point in that way of thinking at all. Uh, I don't have much to add there. You know I agree with you. I mean, that, yeah, you pretty much just said it right there, man. Thanks for the comment. Puff Nisse says, hashtag potato, is that even required? No, it's not. It's just for fun. I would argue that there is a fifth way to be successful on YouTube, and that would be drama. Be it creating fake drama like the Paul Brothers, making good drama like iDubbbz is a co content cop, or talking about drama like Keemstar's Drama Alert. The thing about the drama, whatever grade it is, is just that it creates a short burst of fame, but that's just my opinion. You might not agree. I don't know. Also, is any info about what subject your Halloween thing is going to be? Um... Okay, first let me talk about... Yeah, I think that, honestly, the drama thing does fall into my four ways to be successful on YouTube already. Um, as for the Halloween thing, it is going to be starting on Halloween. I have already watched all the movies. I haven't written the reviews yet, but that's that's a very quick thing. I've watched all the movies, and it's just about ready to be done. I mean, it's, it's all very fast. Watching the movies is the more... Um, well, picking out the movies and then watching them is the uh, the really long part of that. It's actually not a central theme like it has been. It's actually uh, 10 Days of Modern Horror, which I hope you'll enjoy. They're all horror movies from the 21st century. And finally, Sludge1997 says, Hashtag potato. I sub to you because I like your content. I stayed because you're one of the realest people on here. Your content is still good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't have much to add to that. So I guess I got to give the Big Hitomi update and, and his homie's brother update. Um, yeah, this, these past few weeks have been really rough on all of us. And, uh, you know, it, it was getting to that point again where she needed money really badly for rent. And um, there was somebody, and I'm not going to name any names here because I know this person prefers to be... Um, anonymous who had given some large donations and was planning on giving another large donation in November. And, uh, and as far as I know, they're still planning on doing that, which is great. But I, I'd been, I, I talk to Hitomi every day. You know, there are very few people. I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to open up my heart a little bit here and tell you who my favorite people in the world are, you know, not counting family members, you know, the people that are the most important to me. There's a, you know, there is a bit of an hierarchy because Julie's at the very top. There's nobody higher than her. She's the most important person. And then after that, there is like the second tier and Hitomi's in there, you know, Hitomi, Jesse, that's our Megidian time, Tanya, my friend, Andrew, who you guys know, he comes to streams all the time, you know. Those those guys are like my favorite people, and then of course Julie is a little bit above that because I'm romantically entangled with her. But I talk with Hitomi every day, and it is really ups and downs, and it's been a lot of downs recently. And it's had and, and this whole ordeal, which has been going on now for about two and a half years, it started when she lost her job, it continued when her mother died, and then everything on from there has just been one fucking thing after another just keeping her down and i put myself in this position of i'm going to protect her and i'm going to take care of her i'm going to do everything i can to prevent anything bad from happening to my friend and uh i've been doing that and part of that is is coming on youtube and begging for money you know not for myself but for her i don't see any of this you know this has nothing to do with me in terms of the money Every time I ask for money, it's for her. I've never asked for anything for myself. I've had people on YouTube decide to give me money, and, and those people are amazing. I had one guy who gave me $150 for a, to help me buy a computer, and I just I just put that towards the computer. And, you know, that guy, you know, like I said, I don't name names because a lot of times I know these people prefer to keep anonymous. You know, that was really special to me, and that was something I didn't ask for. But I ask for Hitomi because she's super, super important to me. And if anything really bad happened to her, I'm not going to deal with that too well. I'm not even dealing too well right now talking about it. I'm feeling myself becoming extremely emotional. And I'm trying to keep myself level here because I want to make sense to you guys. I don't want to ramble and blubber and, and just, you know, make a fool out of myself 
and then not even get my point across. Okay, I don't mind making a fool out of myself, but I gotta make gotta get my point across in a clear and concise manner. You know, I'm at the point where I am personally feeling the effects of this this situation that has been ongoing, the stress and the worry, you know, and it's very hard to talk to her some days. Not that I don't want to talk to her. I very much want to talk to her. But it's very hard to hear her or to read her saying things like, I don't want you to worry. How could I not? You know? How could I not with everything that's gone on? You know, she was homeless for a while. You know, and she didn't even really tell me about that at first. She told me about it, like, kind of after the fact that she was at the library. And, you know, that just broke my heart. And I knew I had to do something about it, you know. Recently, she's been getting some uh, comments. I don't know where they're coming from. They're coming through, you know, I know I know for a fact that some of them came through YouTube. And I know for a fact that the people who made these comments might be listening right now. Because they are people who came from my channel. And these comments are completely evil, completely wrong, on a factual level, on a moral level, and on every level that something can be wrong. They're misinformed, they're ignorant, and they're mean-spirited. You know, to go to her channel because you don't like me or whatever and and, and or, or what or you don't like you know me asking for money i i mean i even got a comment from a person saying that they were they were getting tired of these requests for money and here's the thing uh fuck you okay because i'm it's not for me man it's it's you know it's not for me and i already addressed that and, and blocked that person because i don't need people like that if you can't give money or if you don't want to you don't have to. Nobody's twisting your arm, you know? Sorry about my phone going off. Let's see. That's a text. Oh, that's just Twitter. All right. Not concerned with that. So anyway, um, some people went over to her channel and they spewed a bunch of bullshit. They spewed some hate at her. Some of it was racist. Some of it was sexist. Some of it was just hateful, you know? What is it that you want at that point? You know what I mean? What is it that you want? You want her to suffer because that's what she's doing. She's suffering. If you want to think that this is not bothering her and that she just brushes it off, you're wrong. You know, it's bothering her very much because, you know, you put yourself in that position where your mother dies and your stepfather steals all the money for the funeral and you have to beg for money just to be able to get home and pay for medical bills and funeral bills and and then, you, you know, you still don't have a job. And then you get hit by earthquakes and typhoons and tsunamis. And, and, and you still don't have a job. You know, she's at the point where she's she's given up in, in some ways. And, and uh, you know, I, I, uh, I've been trying to help. I, I've done videos on it. I've talked to people. I went and I emailed one person who I know had helped in the past and was, help, and was planning on helping in the future. And I said, is there anything that you can do? right now and he did he gave her a rather large sum of money you know and that was just like like 10 days ago you know and i felt pretty good about that because you know it it was enough to cover her for like a while you know and then this situation with her brother you know this is what's killing it right now. This is what's creating the problem. For those of you who don't know about it or need a refresher on it, I'm going to give a very fast refresher on what's going on. Her brother lives in California. He knows these two women that live in Kansas. And at one point, they were they, they're friends of his, you know. And at one point, he gave them money because they asked for money for help with something. And he continued to give them money and he continued to support them basically whenever they asked for money that he would send money and uh because the guy i've talked to him you know he's a bit of a dork 
a, a doormat. He does kind of let people walk all over him. And after a while, um, he, he didn't have money after a while because they took it all. And then when they weren't getting money from him, they were sending, they started sending threats and they started getting abusive. And because the first time when they had sent him money, or when he had sent her money, I'm getting confused here. Like I said, I got to calm down here. And that's why I didn't want to get emotional because when I get emotional, I don't make a lot of sense. The first time that he sent them money, they sent him nude pictures of themselves as a thank you, which is something that, you know, if that's what they want to do, they can do that, you know. He didn't ask for it. Even if he did, it's like whatever. Then he's just buying nudes at that point. But they got it in their heads that that's illegal and that he could get in trouble for it. And then they started threatening to call the police until unless they... Uh, Unless he gives them money. And, uh, you know, me, in my infinite optimism and uh, finite stupidity, I told him, just ignore them. They're not going to actually call the cops. And even if they did, so what? It's, it's, a, it's a ridiculous concept. What is going on here? Hold on a second, guys. i got to pause. There's something going on outside. All right, I'm back. I don't know. I still I don't actually know what's going on out there. People driving across the lawn and shit. I guess it doesn't really concern me, though. So anyway, I told them, you know, they, they got to be they got to be retarded if they call the cops. I mean, I don't mean to use the R word. I'm sorry about that. They got to be dumb as hell. If they call the cops. You, you know, like, can you imagine being a cop and saying, that, hey, uh, this guy won't send us money. Well, why should he send you money? Well, we sent him nude pictures. Okay, so he bought nude, pic nude pictures from you? No, we sent him nude pictures after he sent us money to thank him. Okay. So? You know, click. But he was deathly afraid of dealing with the police because, um, you know, he's not white. He, he's a black guy. And if you're thinking, hey, isn't Hitomi Japanese? Yeah, she's half Japanese. She's half black. He's half black, half Japanese himself. He's more black. She's more Japanese looking. That's just the way it is. And uh, he lives in California. He sees these things on the news. Black people getting hassled and whatnot. He doesn't want to deal with it. He, want, he would prefer to avoid that. What you know these bitches called the police on him? You know, the police called him. Asked him his side of it, and that seemed to be that. And then they kept doing it. And it was, here's the thing. They lie to the police. And you think, how stupid can these women be? They're pretty fucking stupid. But apparently, they're not even calling the police, really. What they do is they go on Facebook. Because this is all happening on Facebook. They go on Facebook. They make a report against him on Facebook. And make all kinds of wild and crazy accusations about him. And Facebook contacts the police, and that's why the police take it somewhat seriously. Now there's been at least three or four calls to the police about him because he won't send them money. The police have showed up at his house a few times. He, he lives with his father, who's getting very upset with this, is on the verge of kicking him out. The, 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 the neighbors are upset because the police keep showing up. The landlord is upset because the police keep showing up. And of course, Hitomi's upset because her brother is being harassed. So I reached out to a friend of mine who's a lawyer to try to get her, you know, um, her input. She's a YouTuber friend of mine who used to do YouTube videos similar to mine, but she gave up YouTube because she, you know, she graduated from law school. So she finally got back to me and, we, you know, um, she basically said that, yeah, he needs to take action. He needs to, to sue them to make a police report to you know, to, to get a restraining order. He doesn't want to do any of these things. He just wants them to go away. You know, he he just wants it to stop. He doesn't want to deal with the police because he's afraid of them because of everything that's been going on in this fucking country and on this fucking planet, I should say. So really, you know, it, it just got worse and worse and worse. And eventually, uh, they decided to start call, calling the police on Hitomi as well. And if you can believe it, that this actually worked they accused hatomi of of being her brother basically they decided that hatomi or that oh, his name is jamal jamal does not have a sister named hatomi who lives in japan she's a fictional character that he created and uh so they must be the same person and and they're both and they're trying to sexually harass these women you know 
Because basically, these women are saying that if they sent nudes in the past, if if he doesn't give them money whenever they ask for it, then they're being sexually harassed. They, they, and they really believe this, which is kind of crazy. So anyway, um, so now the police are on Hitomi's case. And I know she, she really doesn't want me to mention it, but she wound up having to pay some... Uh, some fees and uh i didn't understand it because they, they you know how do you pay fees you know like basically a fine for something that you didn't do and i'm not going to talk about the amount of it or anything but apparently it's you know there's some corruption involved and in, with the police there and uh, there's nothing we can do about that and uh you know just fucking wiped your money right out right out because she got all this money from you know a, a friend of mine who I asked, I emailed him and I said, "Could you send us something now?" He sent a good chunk of change, man. He sent a good amount of money. I thought she was set for a while, and then she spent most of it on bills. You know, she left herself a little bit as a cushion to maybe buy food or to uh, you know to pay bills that might come up, and then this shit happened. That's pretty much wiped out, you know. So she's she's in the negative with money. All right. I know she didn't want me to go into this level of detail. I tried to be as vague as I could, Hitomi. I'm sorry, but I, I feel like people, you know, they need to know. So. I don't understand how the justice system works over there. I don't understand it, you know, and these women won't stop. And by the way, the money that was sent, you know, they found out about it somehow because they you know, because it went through PayPal, and then they, these two women actually, because, the, you know, the brother's saying he doesn't have money, he doesn't have money, he doesn't have money, and then they called, and they, you know, they know enough about him to get, like, some kind of balance amount, because the, you know, the PayPal was in his name, because it's easier that way. They, there's two PayPals, but um, the one, we use the one that's in her brother's name, because the one that's in her name is not verified. The reason that it's not verified is because she doesn't have a social security number because she's not American. So that's kind of confusing. And you can verify it by... Uh, you could verify it by, uh, you know, telephone, but that, that's not working because it's saying that the number that she has doesn't belong to her, which doesn't make any sense. So she can't verify that account, so it's limited what she can do with that account. So she uses her brother's account. Her and her brother are very, very close. You know, and and now they're at the point where she's broke, her brother's broke, nobody has any money. You know, at least she got some bills paid, but it's at the point where you know we're in that crisis mode again. And after these these fucking evil sluts, who you know, I don't even believe in hell, but they need to make a hell just for them. You know what I'm saying? They need to build a hell to house these two. That's where they should live. All right. These two evil fucking whores who, you know, have their own money. One of them has a job, you know, um, from what I heard, making pretty good money, but they don't want to spend their own money because, you know, they feel they shouldn't have to. They, feel, they were raised to believe that some man has to take care of them, and they decided that this, that Hitomi's brother is that man. And they decided that Hitomi doesn't even exist, that that's just a, an all online sock puppet that he made, which is ridiculous. But, I mean, just imagine that, right? So anyway, um, she, she got really upset. She got really, extremely very angry. And she started with the whole, I'm done, fuck this shit, I don't even want any donations, People can kiss my ass. I'm going to take care of this myself. And you guys, if you don't know what that means, you know, she is very close to the point where she wants to go. Well, she doesn't want to, but she feels she has to go out and prostitute herself. And if you remember the very first time that I came and I and I, and I, and I talked about her fundraiser and I and I talked about this, the very first time that I it – was, it was to prevent that. This whole thing was to prevent that. Everything that I've done – regarding her on this channel and off of it was to prevent her from prostituting herself and i'm like you know please don't do that don't 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 put yourself through that why you know 
and and she's just like it's my only choice it's my last resort and i'm like i'm at the end of my rope i'm out of ideas you guys i have no idea what to say that's gonna fix this or what to do you know and maybe that's just the hyper masculine part of me that sees a problem and wants to fix it immediately but i'm at the end of my rope i don't know how to fix this situation you know she just she's ready for this and and she's you know i've tried to come up with other ideas and pitch them to her you know like i don't even want to talk about what my ideas were but i had ideas that were they would be pretty bad but not as bad as that you know i was trying to mitigate it and she she she's just she feels it's the only way. It's the only way that she's going to get any money because this job of hers is not going to start till January. So she's just telling herself, this is just till January. This is just till January. You know, she got hit by a fucking typhoon and, you know, like a bunch of her computer crap got ruined and now she has to pay for repairs. And it's just, you know, I don't know what she's going to do. I don't know what she's planning. She, she talks to me about it a little but I know that she's planning on doing this. And I, and I really don't want her to do that. And she's, I told her that I was going to do this video. And she does not want me to do this, you guys. I want to tell you guys now. She's probably going to be mad at me for doing this video. She's going to be mad at me for making it the bulk of the video, for, for talking about it so much, you know, for getting emotional. She's going to be mad at me. But not, not in the way you're thinking. She's going to be mad really at herself. She's going to blame herself because she feels terrible. You don't understand how hard it was to get her to make the GoFundMe to begin with. It is not in her nature to ask for money. It is not in her nature to ask anybody for help. It is in her nature to do everything herself. This was all me and her brother trying to help, you know, and, and a few other people, too. Like, this guy Troy has been helping a lot with getting the word out there and you know, and all the people that donated, you know, but, but really like the whole, like the whole GoFundMe and everything, like, like that was, that was my idea, you know, and, and, and doing the videos about it and, and her, and it's all me and her brother trying to stop her from doing anything that's going to be demeaning or dangerous, you know, and, and she's at the point now where she's just super angry. She doesn't care. Hold on one second. She's sending me something right now. Actually, I want to see what it is. Sorry, it's something to do with civilization, actually. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, she, she's at this point where she doesn't care what happens to her because they fuck with her family. And and I actually think that part of it is that she feels bad for me and all the stress that I've, you know, that I've been put through and, and that I've been dealing with, and she feels bad about it. She keeps telling me she feels bad. And then for, like, a couple of you fuckheads to go over to her channel or to message her through GoFundMe and tell her that she's scamming people. Like, are you a fucking moron? Are you stupid? Like, are you for real? Because they told her, oh, after all this time and all the money you've been sent, things should be fine. You have no fucking idea how the world works. Of course things should be fine. They aren't. Things should be fine. I shouldn't be talking about this. I should be talking about fucking Xbox and PlayStation, all right? I should be talking about movies or something. I shouldn't be talking about this. She shouldn't be dealing with this shit. You know, there's a lot of things that shouldn't be the way they are, or they should be something else. You know, shit's fucked up all over, okay? So, you know, it the, the like, how naive are you that you think she's scamming because everything isn't magically better? She still doesn't have a job. I mean, she's supposed to start next month, but, the, you know, like I told you guys, due to the whole fucking earthquake and the construction and everything that happened over there, it's not going to be till January. And then who knows? You know, it's still seasonal. And, you know, I've tried. I've tried. And, and she, she, she... One of you guys came out with an idea, and you messaged me through Facebook, and I, and I talked to her about it, that there was a job that she could have taken in Osaka. And in case, I don't know if I forget if I've ever mentioned it, but in case you wondered what happened with that, she basically can't move that far away. Um, I, I really, 
I tried to convince her that it was a good idea, but it got to the point where I, I just kind of had to respect what she was saying to me because basically, I guess what it is is that she lives around uh, close by to some older relatives who are, you know, very old and that, I don't know, uh, maybe they're kind of like, you know, towards the end of their lives and she wants to be near them and she can leave them alone. There's that. So that's, you know, and plus it's just, it's a frightening thing to say, to go from the country to a big city seven hours away, you know, and, and to just, you know, kind of leave your life like that. Um, I don't know. I think that uh, I, I'm at the end of my room. She's at my main room. I'm, I'm just, I don't know if I'm ever even going to talk about this again because it's, uh, it's to the point this last two weeks have been so fucking hard on me. Because I thought we had this settled, and then these two fucking horrors had to go ahead and basically ruin it, you know, with their fucking false police reports and everything. And I talked to her brother, and I say, you got to fucking call the cops. And, he, and he's like, I, I don't want to deal with the cops, because now he's at the point where any more police involvement, him and his dad could lose their apartment. You know, the the... The, the fucking landlord's talking about evicting them just because the police has shown up a few times, even though nothing happened, no arrests were made and everything, just because they keep showing up. Because apparently there was somebody else in the same apartment complex who was selling drugs and they got arrested and, or whatever. And, uh, and, the, and the, the landlord's at the point where he's at the end of his rope and he might make some rash decisions. I looked into it. He can't legally just evict them just because the police keep showing up. But he can jack the rent up to the point where they can't afford it anymore you know and that's probably what he'd wind up doing you know so i don't know i'm, I'm leaving the, the the fucking link in the description the paypal link if you guys want to send her money you know that'd be great her brother you know he doesn't really need money he just needs a lawyer <laughs> that's what he needs but like I said, uh, th the fact that she basically got extorted out of money by, uh, I guess, the local police over there. I don't fully understand. it. It's been explained to me numerous times. It has, both by her and her brother. Her brother explained it a little better, that it really does just boil down to they're corrupt. But um, I I'm just like, and apparently a lot of Japan... That's a probably, you know, they say, oh, if you're in a big city, if you're in like a Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, it's not as much of a problem, but everywhere else, you know, and, and their brother, and I want to, I, I want to switch tax here to something a little bit more, um, a little bit more lighthearted. Her brother, uh, you know, he says something interesting uh, because he's, you know, he's a black guy that, no, you know, he can speak Japanese and apparently some of his friends were getting hot on him about speaking Japanese. And I'm like, why would they get on him about speaking Japanese when his family is Japanese, you know? And, and they said, oh, well, because they're, they're calling him a weeb and all this. And, and he said something funny. He says, all right, well, the thing is, if I was in Japan, I can actually survive anywhere I go because I can speak the language. Well, you go anywhere but Tokyo and it doesn't look like anime, you're going to be screwed. So, <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people have, you know, including myself to a certain extent, have this view of Japan being a certain way. Not necessarily because of anime, but think about, you know, how Europeans view America as being, you know, New York City and Los Angeles and Chicago and not everywhere else, you know, uh, or we'll view the UK as being, you know, London and Edinburgh and not everywhere else. So I think that, you know, part of it is I don't really understand what's happening over there and i don't want to make shit up or try and fill in the blanks myself or whatever i'm just telling you guys what i know that i'm at the end of my rope i'm fucking out of spoons here people okay and i'm not giving up but i'm not sure that i could ever talk about this on youtube again so please uh help out any way you can because um I don't know what to do. I'm out of ideas. I would love to hear some ideas. You know, I think that, you know, if it was me and my family, I would, I would fucking sue the crap out of these two fucking bimbo bitches. I would take them to court. He has, you know, he has lost like about $6,000 because of these two. And now he's been 
threatened with you know the police he's actually gotten death threats from them they're, they're telling him that they have uh friends in this mexican motorcycle gang they're gonna come and you know kill him because he won't send them twenty dollars so they can buy gatorade i'm not even fucking joking about that all right i'm not making this up neither is he because you know what who could really make up shit like this you know none of us is stephen king here so you know, I just, uh, yeah. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about before I head off. I know this has been kind of a long uh, potato cast, but there is one more thing I want to talk about because it relates to last episode and it relates to um, the whole YouTube thing. Because of the way that YouTube is and my whole rant last time about how monetization killed YouTube – or I should say monetization killed YouTube as we remembered it. There have been a lot of people who have tried and failed to move to another platform or to create another platform to compete with YouTube. Um, you know, I mean, that's how Daily Motion came about. That's how vid.me came about. Um, some have tried to launch their own platforms, you know, uh, some prominent YouTubers have launched video platforms and, uh, and, and, and I have gotten some people telling me, well, why don't you go to vid.me or why don't you go to, you know, Storyfire or whatever. And, and actually I want to talk about Storyfire because first of all, I would never work for McJugger Nuggets. Okay. I, I think the guy is the YouTube problem personified. Okay. Now I know he's even feeling the pinch that he's not making any money off of his videos. So he has taken this app that he created, which is only for iPhones. And I guess there's a website it's called Storyfire, And now he's saying that he's going to make it into a YouTube type site. And that he's got some big creators that, you know, some big people from YouTube that are going to be on Storyfire and this and that. I'm going to tell you guys, all right, prediction. And you can tell me that I'm wrong, but I'm going to tell you a couple of years from now, you're going to come back to this video and you're going to say you were right. It's going to fail. Here's the reason that it's going to fail. Not because it's not YouTube or that YouTube has a monopoly, but just because there's only two things that can happen. One is it fizzles out and fails and YouTube continues on the way it is. Or two, it succeeds, becomes the new YouTube, and then all the problems that happened at YouTube are going to happen there. Because McJugger Nuggets has talked about how, you know, he will share the ad revenue in a way that's fair. And he's complained about how on his channel, channel on youtube a lot of his money like uh, almost all of his most viewed videos have been demonetized or have limited or no ads because they're not suitable for all advertisers as decided by youtube here's the thing he's saying that he's going to get ad revenue on Storyfire, but what happens when the advertisers say we don't want to sponsor this stuff because we don't want our commercials to be associated with your videos. Where is he going to find sponsors then? That's why YouTube became what it was. Because of ad revenue. Because of the whole idea that you had to have ad revenue to make money. And unless the sponsors are willing to sponsor it. You know, that's the problem. I'm, I'm rambling a little bit, but that's the problem. So how is he going to avoid that problem? How is McJuggernuggets going to deal with the day where he does one of his ridiculous devil inside of Ursula's cunt videos and has drugs and violence and depression and all this stuff? And then all the advertisers look at that and go, Ugh, we don't want our ads on that. How is he going to make money? How are the people on the Storyfire platform going to make money? And why is it even about money? Why can't people just make videos for the same reasons 
that they made videos in 2007. That's what gets to me. You want to make it a career? That's ridiculous. There are people who get discovered on YouTube and then become famous and rich. And I'm going to give you guys the ultimate example, even though you probably hate the motherfucker because almost everybody does, is Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber is rich and famous because of YouTube. That's where he came from. But guess what? He doesn't do YouTube anymore. He moved on because YouTube's not a fucking career. And if he did stick with it and he said that he was only going to release his music videos on his channel and that he was only going to release his albums through YouTube, he'd, he'd be a fucking failure right now because nobody would want to advertise. Can you imagine when the piss bucket thing happened and, and all his ridiculous behavior and all the dick things that Justin Bieber has done? How they would have affected him on YouTube? Forget it. There's no way. You know, you're supposed. If you want to make YouTube your career, you're an idiot. If you want to use YouTube to launch your career, that's how it's done. But you know, like unless you're going to be like a really sad person, like unless you're going to be, I'm going to use the another really terrible example is Dark Side Phil. This guy is is a let's player who is just he's not good at video games. He's not an interesting personality. He's, he's a schmuck, actually. And the only reason that anybody watches him is because they're waiting for the next meltdown. And now he capitalizes on that. He calls himself the king of hate. You know, and, and, and I think he acts a little crazier than he uh, used to because he knows that that's going to get him more views. But here's the thing. The guy's still sitting on his couch whining about how he can't get five dollars from his viewers you know it, it's just it's sad that's not what your life is supposed to be video games are supposed to be fun they're supposed to be a distraction from your job you're supposed to come home from your job and relax and play video games you know either with your friends or with yourself you're not supposed to play it for a living unless you're a tester but that's a whole different thing you know, that, that's completely different. And even then, you're not, you're not having any fun. Trust me, video game testing is like the worst job. But I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, I would never do this as a career. I would never do this as a career. There are a lot of things that I would consider doing for money. YouTube is not one of them. So I know this has gotten long, but I, I really do have a lot to say on this. So will I move to VidMe? Will I move to StoryFire? No, of course not. Why would I? Why would I? You know what? Because with all the problems that YouTube has had, all the changes they've made, all the bullshit, I'm, I'm still here. And I'm not here because I have to be. That's what is important. I'm not here talking to you people, whether it's on Potato Cast or... Castlevania, Lords of Shadows, or Final Fantasy III, or Binding of Isaac, or any or, or, or movie reviews coming soon. None of that is because I have to. It's because I want to. YouTube is where I want to be. I started YouTube because I wanted to make YouTube videos. I don't want to make VidMe videos. I don't want to make StoryFire videos. I don't want to make Daily Motion videos. Or I don't want to make anything but YouTube videos. Because everything else just seems like a watered-down YouTube to me. They're following the same business plan. You know? And and really what it is, is that if these creators say, oh, I'm not making money on YouTube, I'm going to go to VidMe, or I'm going to go to StoryFi, what makes you think that their content is going to be, you're going to follow them over there, really? People are not going to want, like, three or four apps just to watch, you know, like, all the people they like. That's another thing. It's It's inconvenient to deal with that. Um, so no, I'm not going anywhere. I mean, I, I've had multiple people ask me, especially about vid.me. I, I really, I don't care about it. Um, it's, 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 uh, you know, I, first of all, I don't even know if you make money on that. Okay. Um, if, if it is a money making platform, then I'm, then I'm really not all that interested in it. Okay. Because I'm not in it for the money. You know, the money's a bonus. If it's not a money-making platform, then what what do I get 
from uploading on VidMe that I don't already get from YouTube. I'm not reaching a wider audience. As a matter of fact, I'd be reaching a much, much smaller audience. So either I would have to say, I'm going over there, follow me there, and then maybe about, you know, 3% of you actually do that. You know, 3% of people actually do that. And, and then that never grows because the platform's probably a dead end. And then everybody else says, well, you know, it, it's, it, he's no longer there. You know, he doesn't make videos and people are going to assume I don't make videos anymore. Or I can go through the trouble of uploading everything twice, which doesn't sound very fun to me. You know, so, you know, the, the problem isn't about trying to find the alternative to YouTube. It's not about trying to get YouTube to fix their shit. It's us, the people the community that has to fix our shit. We have to fix our way of thinking. Instead of saying, how come my videos can't get monetized? How come my videos can't get front page views? How come my videos can't be in the recommended? Why don't you just say, who cares? I'm having fun. Who cares how many views I get? Ever since 2009, I've been saying, I don't care if five people watch my videos or five million people watch my videos. I've had people come on my videos and sling such hate, and they say, well, uh, if you continue to do that, nobody's going to watch your videos. You're going to lose views. And I'm like, so? So? Who cares, man? It's not my fucking job. <laughs> like, in your job, you do things a certain way because you don't want to get fired. Nobody's going to fire me from YouTube. You know what I mean? That that's like a ridiculous concept. Even if they say, even if YouTube said, you know what, uh, we're taking away partnership. We're, you're not a partner anymore. Guess what? I'm still gonna do videos. And guess what? I'll probably get more people enjoying them because they're not gonna have to deal with a bunch of fucking ads. So, you know, there's that. So, you know, I I I I I think that's my final. I, I think I've put my final words on a lot of things in this video. Um, I'm going to call it a day, guys. Leave me some questions and comments, and please leave me some positivity, because I could use some. Thanks. BMX out.